I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. Finally, it's Saturday. So all week, um, as we follow up to the live event that we just had, we've been talking about raising our energy and shifting up and out and into a new life. So we raise our energy by releasing the baggage. You know, we call them programs. That garbage that we've been carrying around with us everywhere we go for years. It's been awful, but we can let it go. Some of that junk in our backpack has been there like our whole life. So we've been working on letting it go. Out with the old and in with the new. Which of course then reminds me, speaking of new, that it's almost a new year because uh, 2022 is getting close to being over and we're almost into 2023. So we started working on our goals at the event and I hope that you guys will continue doing that. Uh, The stress mastery um, higher goal setting process is the way to go. The practice that we have is awesome. It's connecting to your higher self, connecting to your purpose, not just making willy nilly goals. Um, It's not just like what you want to accomplish or hope or dream for. It's the why it's connecting you to why you want it so that it's, you know, I call it real. Um, It's not just what you want because you want it, maybe because your friend has it or something. Um, It's what will you have? What's your experience in life going to be if you actually get it? So it's great. Um, Does it really serve you? Do I really need it? Is it going to help me, you know, be a better person? Um, And when we strive for things for the wrong reason, we're not really happy when we get them. We're just still not fulfilled. We're still empty. We're still longing for more. So it's not really, uh, it doesn't really serve you. So we talked about taking uh, one step at a time and walking into our new identity. And I wanted to remind you that it takes time and it takes practice. You need to do the practices, but they work. And we can grow into being the person that we want to be. And I just want to remind you, good things are worth the wait. I mean, they really are. We don't just get everything handed to us on a silver platter. It means so much less anyway. So believe me, I've spent a lot of time waiting. I'll call it a lot of time in the waiting room. (laughs) And I bet you have too. So like, when's it going to happen for me? When will my prince come? Um, When will I get that new job, that new position? When will my career take off? We all have hopes and dreams. And we all want them right now. But I'm asking you to be patient. So, okay, let's be honest. I'm asking me to be patient too. Traditionally, I'm not the most patient person, but I really have been working on myself. But anyone who knows me will attest to that. But I am growing and I'm doing better. And I understand that I will get the things when it's time for me to get them. And it's all a process. And really, like I'm learning, I don't want to get them before I'm ready. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. So I'm trusting God. I'm trusting the process. I mean, do I really have a choice anyways? (laughs) I might as well wait patiently, right? Good things come to those who wait, they say. And I bet that I would just mess it up if it came too early. So I'm just waiting. I mean, if I'm not prepared, I, I don't want it. So I have a plan for good. I am ready for good. But good just doesn't seem to be enough anymore. So I want great. I have these enormous, really bold dreams that I intend to manifest. I'm working on great. My vision is abundance. Plenty of everything. Everything good. My vision is for my life bigger and bolder than any dream that I've ever dared to dream before. And my new life, my new identity, my goals for me, yeah, they're amazing. It's going to be great. I want to experience magnificent, and I believe I can. And I'm being patient because I think that these goals are worth the wait. So I have to remind myself to do my best to stick to the plan while I'm in the waiting room, while I'm playing the waiting game, as they call it. Remember, you don't grow if everything's coming to you easy. There's there's no growth. So the status quo really gets you nowhere. And we have to learn to accept the resistance that we're going to experience because believe me, we're going to experience resistance. Resistance and growth go hand in hand. You, you can't do without it. So we're going to experience fear while we're waiting on our new life. Of course we're going to. It's natural because we're stepping out, doing something brave, doing something that we haven't done before. So we're going to feel fear and resistance. 
The challenge is to not give into it. Don't give up on your goals just because you're hitting a wall. Don't give up on your dream because it's not coming to you fast enough. Trust the process. For me, it's God. I trust God. God has proven himself to me over and over again. He's been faithful to me a million times, much more faithful than I've been to him, I hate to say. I know he's got my back. I know he won't let me down. I am sure of that. And I won't fail if I don't quit. So growing through the resistance is true growth, maturity, raising up your habitual state. So much of our growth happens while we're waiting. So waiting's not really a bad thing. Be patient. Keep working towards your goals. Be the best where you can be, like right where you're at. And um, just trust the process. That's all I can say. So this was reminding me of when I was an insurance agent. A lot of you guys who listen to me know I was an agent for years. So I had to write like several thousand items a year. My agency was getting kind of big and I would lose a lot of business. So in order to grow, if you lose a thousand customers a year, you have to first replace them and then you have to write enough more and able to grow. So make up for those and then write some more, right? So in order to get the cash bonus, I wanted to grow. In order to get the amazing trips that they used to give us all over the world, I wanted to grow. I loved it. I wanted it. I planned on it. So every single day, I had to keep working towards it. I had to manage my staff and maintain my office and just constantly uh, keeping in the process. And I had processes and I tried really hard to get my girls and guys to to stick to the process because I believe that they were proven and they worked. But every single day we had to keep at it. So advertising, I had to, uh, I had staff making hundreds of calls a day. I did car shows and other community events. I did, um, you know, community service things too. I love to do that. Um, and I had a big enough staff to answer the phone so that I could give excellent uh, service. But it was all a process and nothing happened fast. So I'll tell you when I hit my number, I still didn't quit. It didn't matter if I said I was going to write this many for the year, you know, have this big of a bonus. I just kept on going. I always want to do as best as I can. So as as we reached our goals, I just kept on doing the same process because it worked. And that way I had stuff in the hopper for later. It kept up the momentum. You have to keep your momentum going strong. And the funny thing is that I didn't just hit my number. I exceeded my expectation over and over again. My staff was like a well-oiled machine. I was truly blessed. One policy at a time. But I'll tell you, traditionally, we got really slow, really slow at like this time of year. Maybe the end of July, August, excuse me, September, we just shut down because nobody would answer the phone. They'd be like, oh, can you call me back next month? Nobody wanted to change insurance because they were too busy. They were, you know, going to the river. They were doing something else, going camping. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, They were at the beach or they were going on vacation or, you know, whatever. Let's just say they weren't in my office and didn't really want to talk to us. But they were kind and we would say, can we call you back, uh, you know, the 1st of October or whatever it was, whatever worked for them. And so day by day, we filled our pipeline and we prepared ourselves to make those calls when fall would come. So we'd have them uh, in our follow-ups and when it was time, we were ready to call. And um, getting ready for them to settle down again was like our preparation for our, you know, speeding up, right? So that was the process. So we had to keep it in mind. We had to hold on to the vision. And then boom, when fall came, they were ready. They were ready to say yes, and we were ready to to move on it. So um, following up with all those people who had put us off for all that time, it paid off. It worked. They'd answer their phone. They appreciated our stick-to-itness. They thought we were great. So we earned their business. They trusted us. And by the end of the year, year after year, we were golden. So keep your eye on the prize. Keep the, you know, the vision in mind. Don't give up. I like to say, set your mind and keep it set. Don't let the ego distract you. I mean, there's so many distractions in life. That's just fear. That's all it is. And you can work through it, especially if you know what it is. So I use affirmations and visualizations daily. And I believe that they've changed my life. Actually, I know they've changed my life. Changed it for the better. Let me uh, remind you. You need to have a few pages filled with positive affirmations. If you're doing Green Focus Power Hour, it's um, 10 minutes of six different things and 10 minutes of affirmations, 10 minutes of visualization. 
you have to be prepared for it because the ego is going to be fighting you, trying to get you to not do it. So I just have pages full. I have a book like right back here for on the days when I don't feel like releasing all my negative thoughts and putting in with positive. But those are the days that you need it more than ever. So make sure that you're ready for it. Um, if you can't think of a kind word or a promise to say to yourself, that's the day that you really need it. And it's probably, um, if you're not thinking positive, it's because the ego's got your conscious mind control. Remember awareness, our superpower? Gotta always be present enough to know who's in control of your thoughts. For crying out loud, that inner critic, the ego, he never quits. He never shuts up. He never, ever stops. Remember, the ego lies to us and it tries to keep us down. The ego confuses us. The ego's job is to keep us held back. And I mean that literally. The ego wants us to stay exactly the same, to hold us back, to never change, to live in the comfort zone. You know that cage that we talk about? Stuck. So it uses fears, lies, and resentments, and it keeps us trapped. But here's the thing. You know who you are. Deep down, you absolutely know that you're fabulous. You are magnificent. You know it. You're whole, perfect, powerful, and strong. You're loving, harmonious, and happy. You know who you are. So be grateful for that. That will raise your energy just on its own. So stop listening to the ego and take your own control back. You got this. Just be aware of that voice. Just be aware of who you're listening to. Is it you or your ego? You know that still small voice, that tiny spark, that I am? That's the voice you need to connect to. That's your creation mind. That's your heart. That's you, the real you. So that's where the big uh, picture comes from. You got to stay connected to it, though. You can't get hijacked. Got to start being aware. If you haven't named your ego, please do it. Life-changing. So, okay, it's third quarter and it's time to set our new goals. And I got to tell you, if I'm honest with you right now, I'm kind of stuck. It's sort of weird. This used to happen to me all the time, but I didn't think it was going to happen right now. I just didn't. So I'm not really prepared for it. Um, I have been working on my goals and I purposely work on them. I'm connected to my heart and I am so grateful that I get to do what I love to do. I mean, my life couldn't be any better. I mean, this podcast, wow, I'm able to share with you guys. Holy smokes. People are listening and sharing it with others. I'm like helping create a shift in the planet. It's incredible. I'm overjoyed. I'm overwhelmed. So I planned the Stress Mastery event that we just did. It turned out perfect. Everyone connected. Everybody learned and felt like they shifted their energy. Everybody has a plan moving forward. We all bonded as a group full of love and caring. I mean, like we always say, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. Well, mission accomplished at the Rise Up and Shift event. Success. I mean, it was great. We, we uh, were able to help people. I also launched my book this past week. It's called Finally, Becoming the Person You Were Always Meant to Be. And guess what? I hit number one bestseller in several categories. Amazing. Oh my gosh, you guys should see the reviews. And yeah, of course, a couple of them are from, from my friends, but the majority of them, and I mean the vast majority, are people I don't even know. They don't even know me. They're not saying it for a favor. So people are saying that it could be a movie. People are saying, I think one person, one person, maybe two said that it would be a great book for a book club. Wow, <laughs> my book. Yes, I wanted to inspire people with my story and it's happening. People are reading it. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. Like, yay. I sold my house last year and I got this cute little house on a tree lined street. You guys just wouldn't believe how cute my house is. I love it. I'm healthy and strong, I'm loved, I'm like solid in my life. And I know what I want, but for some reason, I just can't write out my steps I need to get to it. And usually I can do that, so I'm really stumped and it doesn't feel very good to me. And so I have some big dreams, but I will figure out how to get there. I just don't know what to do next to promote my new life, my new identity. So Lucy, my ego, she's trying to take control of, of the whole show. So she's in here telling me, I need to chill, relax, be complacent. You've been working so hard, Peggy. Enjoy your life for a minute. Why can't you just stop for a minute? Why do you always have to do more? Why isn't enough enough? Well, I don't know why, but it isn't. <laughs> I don't have a plan right now, but it sure, my plan sure isn't to listen to my ego. <laughs> Thankfully, I have awareness of my ego. 
I know that there's going to be res- resistance of all kinds coming at me now. Believe me, it's coming from all over. So I have the tools that I need to get through this, though, and I'm very grateful for that. I also believe that since I'm working on God's plan, I won't fail. I know I won't fail if I don't quit, but I especially won't fail because I'm connected to my higher power. It's, it's my calling. Like, this is my purpose for life. So um, I think that the full fruition of this dream that I have, this big, bold, I think bodacious is a word. I think that this big, bold, bodacious dream is going to take time to fulfill. Like, it, I'm just working on it. Like, I'm just pregnant or something. <laughs> so I'm going to pray and be patient. Um, you know, I heard that it takes two years, I think close to two years to for an elephant to have a baby. It takes time. It's grand. It's enormous. It's magnificent. So hamsters, I just looked it up before I started recording this. Hamsters are only pregnant for two weeks. So like hamsters are like the little goals, the little tick, tick, tick. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And if that's where you need to start to get some confidence, start there. Nothing wrong with, with a hamster. But right now in my life, I'm going for the elephant size, gigantic goals. And so I'm just going to sit here and be patient. I was just talking to uh, my daughter, Kimberly, earlier. She uh, had come to the um, Rise Up and Shift event. So she's had her eye on this job um, for a while. I think probably three years. And she's gone through you know, a couple other positions, but she, she always has that in mind. And so... Um, her corporation has considered her for other positions and you know she's thought about it and appreciated it but she realized that if she took a different job that she wasn't going to have herself in the right position to be able to get this job that she really wants if it comes up so she was waiting patiently and then she just found out that when we when we got back from the event this week when she went to work on monday she found out that she is the succession plan for that job that she's been wanting all these years so it's great so i'm thinking and talked to her about it earlier today that she manifested that job for herself i mean it's totally hers because of the way that she thinks and the way that she feels and for her setting herself up for it so like I said, she was at the event this weekend. And on one of the breaks, um, she says, Mom, when I get the, um, when I get the um, ADP, when I'm in charge of the ADP, then I'm going to have them start the day with Green Focus Power Hour. Instead of just coffee and sitting around talking for, you know, half an hour, I'm going to have them start with that because then they're starting their day in the green zone, which will be great. So... Just, you know, not just that she wants to set them up for the day, which I think is fabulous, but notice the when I get the job. There was no doubt. It wasn't if I get the job or, well, I hope I get the job so that they can do Green Focus Power Hour. It was when I'm in charge of the ADP, you know, so I was like, yeah, she expected to get it. That's why she passed up the other jobs. That's why she just set, kept her eye on the prize. She manifested that for herself because she believed that she could do it. So she did it. So I think it's great. So I want to ask you, are you doing daily affirmations? Like, what are you planning for yourself? Are you planning on great? Are you birthing an elephant or a little hamster? I want to remind you guys that all of this stuff is in the Stress Mastery community. And you can get in there for free. The goal setting stuff is in there. Higher goal setting. It's really great. Um, so you can get that process out of there. The purpose exercise is also in there to make sure that you know, you know, what your purpose is and that you're living life on purpose. And there's so much more in there. Um, so I hope that you guys are already in there, but if you're not, um, please take a look in there. It's totally worth your time. Um, also, if you haven't ordered my book and you'd like to, you can go to my website and buy it. Of course, it's on Amazon, Kindle and all that stuff too. Um, my website is PeggyRomero.com. I would love to send you an autographed copy. Uh, I hope that you'll follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you are. I hope I'm there too. And you can contact me um, on my website or email me at Peggy at PeggyRomero.com or Peggy at LivingRightWithBillCourtright.com. So if you guys need any help on getting started on any of these things, reach out to us. Uh, Bill, David, the other coaches, myself, we're all here to help you. And I just want to say thank you to Bill again for um, sharing his platform with me. I mean, what a blessing. I'm so grateful. It's like, 
unbelievable um, that he's so generous with me. And I'm grateful for you for tuning in today and listening to me. So if you enjoy the podcast, not just mine, but any of them, share them with a friend. Um, we would love to be able to shift the planet more quickly with your help. So that's all I've got today. And remember, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on that mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.